suit. I think I'm going to hand over to your colleague. Okay. Senator Ludlow. You <laughs> Thank you. luck just that bit too far. <laughs> Um, could we um, get a few moments with somebody representing the Clean Energy Finance Corporation? Sure. Uh, Senator, I'm Louise McCulloch, General Manager, Industry, Environment and Defence Division. Great. Um, the Clean Energy Finance Corporation, as you know, is a separate entity. Yes. But in terms of policy responsibility, that rests within my division. Okay. Um, I'm also aware that it's in the process of establishment. Can you just, from the point of view of the committee's work is concerned. Will we ever be in a position to get representatives directly of the CFC here, people from the board, for example, or is that somebody that, S that this committee can legitimately call? Senator, I'll take that on, yeah. on we'll advice. We'll check that. Oh, I, would be I, think, I would think so. Yeah. Yeah, I would have thought thought thought. Uh, before I get all outraged on my soapbox, I'll just wait and you can let us know. Well, there's, not, a, there's yeah. not been a conscious decision to deny it, Senator. No. That's all right. Next time. I, I suspect you'll be able to help me out because these are fairly general questions anyhow. Um, so an implementation plan was handed to the government this March. A board's been appointed in August. Um, industry has certainly expressed concerns to us about this, the pace, the speed of the establishment of the CEFC. <coughs> and uh, expressing concerns that it won't be ready to start investing as scheduled on 1st of July next year. So could you just provide a progress report and a timetable on the remaining steps to get the CFC fully on its feet? Yep. Okay. I'll, I'll answer in the, I'll give you a general answer and then see what, what yep. you're particularly interested in. Great. Um, so Senator, as you know, the, um, the CFC is not due to start actually investing until post 1 July 2013. Yep. So this period um, leading up to that is um, a, a implementation and transition phase. The Act um, commenced on, in August, the 3rd of August. The board was appointed um, on the 7th of August, five yep. member board, um, and the board's met three times. Um, since August. Okay. Um, recruitment of a CEO is well advanced and we're expecting um, to have an outcome on that in the near future. Great. Um, consideration of accommodation options for the CEFC to be located in Sydney are well Sydney. advanced. Yep. Um, the Treasury, um, this, this, the way we think of it is there's three phases to the implementation of the CEFC um, and at the moment while the CEFC has a board, it doesn't have staff. Okay. Um, and Treasury is providing admin support on a fee-for-service basis for uh, yep. the CEFC. Yep. So there's a letter of understanding between Treasury and the board, which is an agreement about what services we provide um, where we're absorbing indirect costs, staffing costs, etc. Yeah. But direct costs are at, um, the CEFC oh. are reimbursing us for. Okay, got it. So when would you expect to, that this entity will have a physical location and staff of its own? So what we're the, on the basis of, of our current planning, and we've developed some detailed project plans that we've worked on with the board. Great. Um, but at the moment, um, in terms of accommodation, that could be next year. Yeah, but at this stage, the planning is, and on the basis of what we've got, we're expecting early next year um, to um, be in a position to have a physical um, and, and stand up of the CEFC. Okay, early next year in Sydney. Um, we're po I suspect we're short of time, although the chair hasn't pulled me up yet, but I wonder whether you could maybe table for us anything you're able to tell us on activities and milestones for the execution of the implementation plan from uh -huh. here and give us a sense of your work plan or of CFC's work plan, such as it, as it is, between now and, and the 1st of July next year? Um, there's a whole range of steps that, uh, if you'd like, are administrative steps that need to be put in place before they yeah. can um, officially um, take control of their money and, and so yeah. forth. That's so they're, they're things like around audit committees Great. and those sorts of things. So if it's not a, if it's not some grievous breach of national security, and I, I don't want you to spell yep. it out for me now, but if you can just put on on the table for us yep. what those steps are and, to the best of your knowledge, in what order and when they occur. Yep, we can take that on notice. Much appreciated. Thank you very much. Um, now, I understand the CFC has met with the Climate Change Authority as part of the review of the renewable energy target and arena on how the bodies can work in tandem, which is good. What can you tell us about how the CFC and arena will, will work together? 
Um, so the CEFC has had um, board has had a lot of meetings with a lot of bodies, um, and I'm not fully aware of all of those meetings. They're an independent board, yeah. um, but they certainly have met with people like the Climate Change Authority. They've had meetings with the Arena Board, a yeah. um, whole range of um, organisations. In terms of the working arrangements between the CEFC and Arena, um, they've had discussions, but um, there's no firm. Um, decisions. Okay. I just think that's going to be tremendously important. What about engagement with the industry thus far? Again, my understanding is they've had quite extensive engagement um, to the extent that they can, given that there's only five members of the board yeah. at the moment and they've only been in existence since August. But um, they've got they've had quite a number of meetings with industry participants. Again on notice, I think, um, and I appreciate what you're providing for us now. If you could give us any further written details on any kind of any indications of how the CFC and Arena will or won't work together? It's going to be a tremendously important relationship, obviously, yep. um, we, if the Commonwealth's investment in this industry is going to. Yep. We can take that on notice. Yeah, um, and also anything you're able to tell us about engagement with industry. Will the corporation issue a prospectus at some point, or at what point will it actually open its doors and start taking start taking bids? Sorry, I didn't hear the last part of the question. I, I, like, at what point, if I'm if I'm hanging around and this is what I've been waiting for forever, and I'm in the industry, at what point can I knock on your door and get a meeting with somebody about an investment? So there's opportunities to meet with the board now. What industry by industry? Uh, and a number of them are coming forward. Industries okay. are, but. In terms of actually, if you like, engaging in more serious conversations about applications and those sorts of things, our expectations are in the first half of next year, once they have some staff and some physical presence, that they'll be in a better position to actually engage in a more serious way. But those consultations are certainly starting to occur now. Okay. Um, do you, this can be a bit tricky because I'd, I'd really be keen to know what the corporation itself thinks on the implications of the CEFC for the operation of the renewable energy target and, and how they should be managed. There's been some criticism in press in the rec in recent uh, times. Some in some of the older, more entrenched sectors of the energy industry want the renewable energy target wound back, for example. So, Senator, the issue of the renewable energy target is not Treasury portfolio responsibility. Sure. There's actual review being conducted. Climate change? Yeah. Climate change. Yeah, yeah. Climate no, change. I, I recognise that. Yeah, Department of Climate Change. The authority. authority. Uh, oh, yes, yeah, sorry, it is the Climate Change Authority yep. that's conducting that. That's right. I'm looking for the CEFC's eyes view yeah, on and these things. The CEFC will have the opportunity to be consulted as part of that. Um, they're not formally part of the policy decision making process, but they're certainly one of the stakeholders that will okay. be consulted. As to their views, um, I couldn't, you'll have to ask that question of them. Oh, uh, well, I'll. Uh, will then formally issue an invitation to them to appear at the next estimates committee. Um, the uh, Australian Solar Institute recently produced a really valuable report on baseload solar thermal plants, or maybe they're not even using the term baseload, but utility scale solar concentrators that can run well after the sun's gone down. And they show a cost revenue gap that it still costs more to build these things than you can get back from the pool price in electricity markets. Um, is the CEFC in going to be in business to generate a profit or a return for the Commonwealth? And what kind of risk profile are you going to adopt? And I'll come to the question of these partic this particular technology type in a moment. But what kind of investment criteria are going to guide its work? So, Senator, um, uh, so the CE under the legislation, the CEFC has a commercial filter. Yeah. And there is an expectation that it eventually will have a positive return to the, to, um, to the budget, to, to taxpayers. It's not for a while, but that's, that's an estimate assumption. In terms of what technologies and what they'll be investing in and what their risk profile, et cetera, will look like, that is one of the things that has to be developed between now um, and next year. Okay. So that hasn't been resolved yet. All right. The reason I raise that particular um, Australian Solar Institute report is that it shows that for the next four or five years, the cost revenue gap means that just on a purely commercial basis, you wouldn't build these plants. They, they're being commercialised and built overseas, which is pushing the, the cost generation down. And eventually, even if we just sit back and do nothing, in five or ten years, they'll be competitive with coal and gas. Um, 
So my question really is, um, if, if the CEFC is just taking a, a purely commercial point of view that it has to provide a return to the taxpayer, it wouldn't be investing in these plants, presumably. And so my question is, is, there, is it envisaged that the CEFC will be able to do other things, perhaps a little bit more creatively, to bridge that gap between the cost of the plant and the revenue that it would generate for this brief period of time in which these costs are high? In terms of which technologies and what risk profile they're prepared to take on, it will be a matter for the CEFC. Um, however, the policy intent um, is, uh, allows for the CEFC to provide um, concessional loans. And yeah. when we say concessional, they're still earning a return, but they're concessional to what could have, uh, would, be, would have been required in the marketplace. Yeah. Um, so there is provision within their, um, their, their legislation um, for them to invest in things that may not have been able to attract capital through the normal commercial market. Um, there is also um, the investment mandate that the government needs to provide is yet to come and that will also to provide some guidance, very high level guidance around things like appetite for risk um, and rate and an average over mm. the whole portfolio rate of return. Okay. And that hasn't been resolved yet. I just wonder whether 100 years ago, if we'd applied these criteria to coal-fired power stations, we probably would have never built any. I suspect the same with the gas industry. Um, I think it'll be interesting when we do get CFC, if we do in front of us next time, to try and work out um, exactly how this is going to work. Otherwise, we're going to find a whole pile of, probably I suspect wind farms will be financed and some of the really promising solar technology, if it can't provide a rate of return for the government yet, um, I don't understand how it's going to work, actually. Anyway, we will, I guess we'll reconvene with them yeah. next so, time. So yeah. It's the portfolio that um, provides a rate of return, not the okay, individual, individual project. project. That's right. All right, it's going to be interesting to tease apart. All right. Thank Thanks. you. Thanks. Thank you, Senator. Senator